Thanks for joining us on the weekend edition of National Focus. I'm Jana Hector. Coming up, state-of-the-art medical equipment to be installed at the Princess Margaret Hospital before you end. Dominica bids farewell to Chinese Ambassador Wang Zonglai. And a cocktail reception welcomes the first ever Cantor CEFE meeting in Dominica. Stay with us for more after this. If you can believe this... Come by my house and let me show you some movies. Why can't you believe this? Some mothers don't believe their own children when they say they've been sexually abused and they don't report it. Remember, if anyone asks to see or touch their private parts, touches them inappropriately, shows them or forces them to touch one's private parts, has sex with them, shows them pornographic material, or deliberately lets them hear or see the act of sex, then it is sexual abuse. Believe your child and report the sexual abuse. For more information about child abuse, contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. Thanks for staying with us. The government of Dominica on Thursday hosted a special farewell reception in honor of Chinese Ambassador Wang Zonglai, who has officially ended his three-year stint in Dominica. Ambassador Zonglai took up his post in Dominica in 2010. Prime Minister Honorable Roosevelt Skerritt, in his remarks, said Ambassador Zonglai has served with distinction. He has been of extraordinary help to us in advancing the bilateral relations between Dominica and China, and also critically advancing some of the programs and projects and agreements which have been entered into between Dominica and China. And oftentimes, I am sure, as I know, his country would ask him whether he is Dominica's ambassador or the Chinese ambassador in Dominica because of the efforts he, he plays in promoting and seeking assistance for Dominica's economic and social development. The Prime Minister referred to Ambassador Zong Lai as a true friend of Dominica. The Ambassador's tenure as China's Ambassador to Dominica comes to an end this month. We have here this evening some mixed emotions. Um, saying goodbye to a friend is not always an easy task because Ambassador has in fact been a very dear friend of Dominica and Dominicans. Prime Minister Skerritt used the occasion to reaffirm his government's commitment to the One China Principle. Every single Dominican will agree that this relationship has been of mutual benefit to China and Dominica, but more so to Dominica because Dominica has benefited immensely from the generosity of the Chinese people and the Chinese government. And we shall always remain grateful to the government and people of the People's Republic of China. Ambassador Wang Zonglai admitted that he loves Dominica and will always treasure his experience. The first feeling is that I love the nature island. <laughs> the nature island is such a charming place that I fell in love with it when I put on it for the first time. I love the mountains and the rivers. I love the meadows and the woods. And I love the sky and the clouds. Come March 2014, Dominica and the People's Republic of China will celebrate 10 years since the establishment of diplomatic relations. Prime Minister Skerritt said this milestone achievement will be celebrated in a grand way by both countries. Next year, we will be having a whole year of celebrations. And I have no doubt His Excellency, though he is leaving us, will participate in the celebrations on the China side of things, because there will be celebrations both in Dominica and in China. We'll bring you more coming from the farewell reception for Ambassador Zonglai in a subsequent newscast. 
Dominica's head of state, His Excellency Charles Savre, paid his first official visit to the Princess Margaret Hospital on Thursday. The president's entourage, which included his wife, Honorable Alvin Bernard, and Health Minister Honorable Julius Timothy, were met by administrators of the island's main hospital. Together, they visited patients on the various wards, bringing Christmas cheer. The president had the opportunity to interact with the young and the old, the sick and those recovering. It is therefore a distinct pleasure for me to follow in the tradition of my predecessors in office in using this time of year to interact with the patients of our, and our country healthcare workers and to extend Christmas greetings to you all and to all Dominicans at home and abroad. In related news, the government of Dominica has made good on its promise to install state-of-the-art medical equipment at the island's main hospital, the Princess Margaret Hospital. Health Minister Honorable Julius Timothy, at a ceremony to recognize hospital staff on Thursday, disclosed that important equipment promised by government will be installed at the hospital before the end of the year. The minister announced that the government has already come through on a promise made in the 2013-2014 budget and has secured a new CT scan and a new mammogram for the hospital. The health minister said the equipment which was purchased for the new Princess Margaret Hospital will temporarily be placed on the ground floor of the old psychiatric unit building, which has been converted into a modern conference center. We had decided also to put our drug unit downstairs. However, we had to change those plans because we have um, bought a new CT scan and a new mammogram and we decided while we have not yet built the new hospital, we will install them downstairs. The minister noted that overseas technicians have been brought in to install the new equipment. He silenced critics by announcing that the new CT scan, also referred to in the last budget, was in fact purchased by the government of Dominica and is expected to become operational at the hospital by January 2014. I heard somebody on the radio saying that the Prime Minister said he was going to do this, that and the other. And where is it? I would like them to know it has been done. So the mammogram, the technicians from overseas are here in installing it. We have all the, the equipment for, for the gastroscopy that's been here, that is here, and from Monday, the overseas technicians will be here to install it. And in about a week, the CT scan, the new CT scan, will also be here. It's been paid for totally, okay, so that come January, this building will be fully functional. The minister also indicated that with the assistance of the Chinese government, plans for the new Princess Margaret Hospital will continue to materialize in the new year. He used the opportunity to hail progress made in transforming the old psychiatric unit building into a state-of-the-art conference facility at the Princess Margaret Hospital. We decided to renovate the building because the engineering report said that the structure was sound. You will see what we've done here with the as a conference center. And whenever we have major functions at the hospital, we can now have those functions in here. Our health information unit at the back, they have the offices and they have all the health information equipment is stored stall in here. We have state of the art video conference in here. You will see our screens, you look at the back, you will see our 
TV monitors. The minister also disclosed that an oncology center will be ready for use by early next year. Downstairs, we are going to have our oncology center. We expect by about the 15th of January, the building will be fully renovated. And Ross has donated all the equipment for our oncology center. And so we expect towards the end of January, February, our oncology center will be fully operational. Lime Dominica has come through in a major way for the Ministry of Telecommunications. On Friday, Lime Dominica presented the Government Information Service and DBS with tablets with a view to enhance the quality of work disseminated at those institutions. In total, 10 tablets were presented, six of which were given to GIS, two to DBS and the remaining two for the Ministry of Telecommunications. Bennett Thomas, Director of Telecommunications, says these tablets will be utilized for fieldwork activities. I found it important, especially during the hurricane season, to ensure that that piece of device would be of be great benefit to the GIS team. So uh, I, ma I made a move towards uh, Lyme as a corporate citizen, and Mr. Baptist here was very much influential in getting the work done. Jeffrey Baptist, general manager of Lyme, stated that he felt it necessary to honor the request of government for the tablets. Any requests coming from the government of Dominica is certainly a request we, we always would like to favorable consider. And, um, and in this particular instance, we were very happy to do just that. Uh, I think sometimes we need to remind all of us that the, the government of Dominica is a 20% shareholder in our company, Cable and Wireless. So in effect, the, the people uh, of our beautiful country are in fact 20% stakeholders in, in, in our company. And, and we all need to always remind ourselves of that fact. And, and, and if we can make a contribution towards supporting the government's development first, we, we are always quite prepared to do just that. Baptist stated that these devices will certainly assist media personnel in their daily activities. We think we have an obligation as a leading telecommunications provider in Dominica to encourage the use of, of, of telecommunications across the government's network. We feel that um, we need to get people in, um, more sensitive towards um, using telecommunications, the internet and other tools to make their jobs a lot easier. Minister for Telecommunications, Honorable Ambrose George, applauded Lime's commitment. Uh, Lime has taken that corporate decision as a corporate body, um, very responsible one for that matter, uh, to give to the government uh, on behalf of the GIS um, a number of um, tablets uh, for the purposes of the field work that our uh, staff at the GIS and I must say um, DBS um, carry out um, on a daily basis. He says this is a significant gesture as Dominica is moving forward in a very technologically savvy society. We have to keep up with the change in technology that is taking place and in order to keep up we have to have the relevant equipment, the relevant gadgets if you want to call them so, um, the means of keeping up with that technology and uh, the, the fact that we are now able through line to better equip the staff of the GIS in the field work is really going to make a, a tremendous difference, not only in terms of, in terms of efficiency, but in terms of proficiency um, as far as the work is concerned. And we are looking at, at, at real time. So rather than the uh, staff in the field, you know, have to come back to the office to, to, to relay or to unwind, if you want to put it so, the information that has been gathered, he can, he can do so in the field by the click of a button. A cocktail reception at the Fort Young Hotel marked the first meeting of the Caribbean Association of National Training Agencies, or CANTA, in Dominica. This was the organization's 22nd meeting since its inception in 2003. Chairman of Technical and Vocational Education and Training, or TVET, in Dominica, Edison Henry, delivered welcome remarks at the brief pre-cocktail ceremony on Thursday evening. Such to me is a representation of how important it is 
the leaders of CARICOM, as well as the practitioners of TVET, has placed on the importance of how TVET must be something that the Caribbean people take forward. Technical and vocational education and training, he says, complements the purpose of the Caribbean Association of National Agencies, CANTOR. CANTOR's objectives now provide existing prospects for a core group of West Indian people who are absolutely necessary but for some time have been overlooked. The need to certify and harmonize the qualification that artisans and other such groups observe or, or are, cre are credited with in the Caribbean cannot be understated. I believe, therefore, the time has come for certification and appreciation of all TVET practitioners in the Caribbean. It has come and it is right. The two-day meeting, which ended Friday, brought to Dominica some of the Caribbean's leading minds in TVET from 12 regional states. Also represented were the Caribbean Examinations Council and the CARICOM Education for Employment, or CEFE, a $20 million program sponsored by the Canadian International Development Agency. The island's Minister for Education and Human Resource Development, Honorable Peter Seja, who told the gathering that education is, quote, a premier national priority, also stated that synergy must be found in the relationship between technical and academic learning. The key, therefore, is finding and striking the right balance between embracing these modern developments on the one hand and harnessing them in such a manner as not to replace but to empower our own indigenous skills, craftsmanship, and creativity on the other hand. This is the crossroads at which we find ourselves today. And friends, this is the challenge that we face in crafting our system of education to meet our ever-evolving needs as a region. Taking the meeting to Dominica is a way of acknowledging Dominica's interest in TVET development. This is according to CARICOM Education for Employment Representative Dr. Linda Cook. Dr. Cook revealed that support will be provided by CEFE for the creation of business and sustainability plans for the TVET program. GIS will bring you more from that event in a subsequent newscast. And the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, the FCCA, this year selected Dominica's children to benefit from its holiday gift program. The FCCA holiday gift program is a yearly donation of Christmas gifts to underprivileged children. The program was designed to reach out to FCCA partners in the Caribbean. On Friday, gift items were brought in to Dominica by crew aboard the MV Emerald Princess, and distributed at a ceremony at the Public Service Union building. 200 children from the Tarish Pit community as well as children from the Child Fund Caribbean program received gifts from Santa. Honorable Ian Douglas spoke at the ceremony reminding children that they too can play a part in tourism by keeping the environment clean. He thanked the FCCA for the program and noted that small gestures like these help to strengthen the bond that exists between the cruise line and its partners. In those little gestures, it really re-emphasizes and reinforces the partnership that exists between the cruise lines and destinations like Dominica. And we want and we advocate and we encourage more of those types of gestures. Because although it may look simple to you, but bringing the Christmas chair to so many children today here in Dominica really strengthens the bond of friendship that exists between all our destinations in the Caribbean, not just Dominica, and the Florida Caribbean Cruise Association, the FCCA. Local sponsors also joined with the FCCA to make these donations possible. We would also like to express our thanks and appreciation to the following organizations for their generous contribution. Springfield Trading Limited, Fine Foods Inc., Hara Agencies, Combine Taxi Association, Don Sims, and Castle Comfort Lodge. 
Last year, 33 destinations participated in the program with over 7,000 children receiving holiday gifts. And that's the English news. Macpherson St. Louis is up next with the Creole highlights. Hello, tout le monde. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Creole, non moins c'est Macpherson St. Louis. Premièrement, le gouvernement d'Omne a un commitment pour mettre l'équipement neuf à l'hôpital Princess Margaret en Roseau. Parole Salah, sorti au ministère de la Santé, Honorable Julius Timothy, pendant cette cérémonie pour te recogniser les travailleurs. J'ai dit, selon le ministre Timothy, ces équipements salah ont été en place avant l'année de venir au bout. Et le gouvernement déjà a un point pour mettre un CT scan et puis un mammogramme pour l'hôpital là, bagaille qui a été en vie l'occasion et puis yo. Le ministère Timothy fait parole qui est technicien dans l'autre pays en Dominique à présent pour installer ces équipements salam et aussi annoncer que ces équipements salam qui fonctionnent en l'hôpital Princess Margaret par janvier l'année prochaine. À la nouvelle compagnie Telecoms Lime fait présentation équipement Telecoms qui est facilité GIS et puis DBS voyez information pendant yo ko à ces fil là. Officier compagnie la fait ses présentation là pendant un petit cérémonie en l'occasion GIS bon matin là. Ministère Telecoms Honorable Ambrose George fait parole que ces morceaux d'équipement salam qui facilite GIS et puis DBS. Ça nous observer aujourd'hui c'est Lime Dominica Limited. Yo ba ministre Telecoms information avec uh, constituent empowerment 10 tablettes uh, pour 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 mam qui ka travaille à GIS avec DBS avec ministre télécommunication. Um, pour servir ces tablettes à, 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 à ce travail. Um, ça nous voit aussi que GIS tape 6 tablettes, um, DBS tape 2 tablettes, avec le uh, ministre de télécommunication um, tape 2 tablettes, ça est 10 en, en tout. Um, ces tablettes, c'est même là qui travaille à GIS, qui servent ces tablettes, là qui fait travail au dehors. Um, parce que vous avez pour aller dehors pour le pour, pour coverage, pour, pour pour um, taper nouvelles, pour point portier, um, ça y a fait avec ces tablettes ça qui qui ont aidé pour faire travail la plus facile, la plus efficient, la plus proficient avec um, ça qui a fait ça qui t'es qu'a fait avant que y a fait travail au en fil là, y a eu pour dériver à l'office là pour aider, pour mettre un travail de manière So, il ça nous nous ça ouais à ce dia dia ça veut télévision or si c'est DBS on est pour aller là après en um, commission après c'est 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 ça um, um, y a eu café avec on est pour dériver à uh, à uh, um, studio à DBS et then mettre à sur radio pour mon tant nouvelle là qui a fait c'est ce so, so tablette ça qui est moins dur pour faire ça plus vite parce que il y a il y a pas ni pour dériver à l'officier um, pour pour transmettre information à, à, à l'officio. So, so, ou quoi que ça, real time. Uh, quand vous tapez un fil là, c'est même temps que vous avez à l'officio pour commencer à mettre en manière pour voir à sur télévision ou pour tenir à sur um, DBS Radio. En la nouvelle, plaisir d'autres activités qui a formé par célébration 30 anniversaire groupe culturel Pébouch. Discussion et puis mon allage qui a concerné médicaments hot Zeb et puis Gwala Mess dimanche en parmi ces activités là. Mademoiselle Rosalind Paul, c'est président du groupe culturel Salah. Nous qui avons un package de ces gens, un grand monde là, pays, un commune là aussi, et nous qui avons une chance pour dire nous les les remèdes, herbal remedies, des gens de monde, ça y est qu'a fait, et ben fait boire, comment est-ce qu'a aidé à la maladie. Nous avons aussi un grand la messe dimanche. Nous ne pouvons pas oublier bon Dieu fait autant de nous. Nous avons un grand la messe aussi dimanche. Et autant d'autres choses. Nous avons des choses d'éducation aussi, protocole workshop, rap session et des gens de monde aussi. Finalement, l'organisation Canta Chain, un grand meeting en Dominique Simen Salam, qui était facilité par le ministre de l'Éducation. Mitin Salah mené ensemble officier Wish Yolam qui a engagé en éducation Tivet, ça c'est pour le monde à prendre au l'état. 
ministère de l'Éducation Honorable Peter Saint-Jean, fait parole que Dominique bien plaisir que le grand meeting en porte salon prend place à Dominique à l'installant. Honorable Saint-Jean fait parole que le meeting là bien unique quand le ministère a implémenté le programme là en l'école secondaire PIA à présent. Mais c'est mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous la Créole pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Mac Fossil, c'est l'os. Quand vous tout le monde, en bon saison Noël. Voilà. Coming up next, how sunlight helps reduce your risk of illness. Do you have uncovered water storage drums around your home? Do you dispose of old tires, cans and old containers capable of holding water anywhere in your environment? Are you being bitten by mosquitoes, particularly at dusk and early morning? Do you keep house plants in water? Do you spend your hard-earned cash to control mosquitoes? Has your community experienced dengue fever outbreaks? If your answer is yes to at least three questions above, you are at risk to dengue fever. Join the fight against dengue fever. The responsibility for a dengue-free Dominica lies with you. So, get rid of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. mosquito. Your body must have vitamin D to absorb calcium and promote bone growth. Vitamin D deficiency has been linked to cancer, heart disease, depression, weight gain, and other maladies. Our body creates most of our vitamin D from direct sunlight on our skin. A short period in the sun means a matter of minutes. Evidence suggests that about 10 to 15 minutes is enough. The larger the area of your skin that is exposed to sunlight, the more chance there is of making enough vitamin D before you start to burn. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Friend us on our Facebook page and be sure to like our GIS Dominica fan page. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. On behalf of the entire news production team, I'm Jana Hector. Thank you for watching and stay safe this weekend. <laughs>